Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! My ex and I divorced about 15 years ago and we have shared custody of our daughter. In the divorce she wanted our house but I fought hard against it because it's been my family home for three generations before I inherited it. In the end, we came to a compromise that was signed off by the judge. Basically, she gets to live in the house rent-free until our daughter turns 18. Then I get it back. I had to pay the utilities, maintenance, and property taxes the entire time. In addition, she can't make any modifications or upgrades to the house without my written permission. She's solely responsible for the cost and the work has to be performed by an insured and legally licensed professional. I've been sending her move-out notices for months in anticipation of my daughter's 18th birthday and recently, that came to pass. The day after I showed up to the house with a contractor because I wanted some work done before I moved back in, at first she refused to let me in until I reminded her that I am the legal owner of the house. According to our divorce agreement signed by the judge, she is no longer allowed to be there and I will call the police if she doesn't let me in. She got the point and opened the door. And I was surprised. Nothing was packed and it didn't seem like she's moving at all. We were arguing as I walked through and inspected my house. She wanted extra time and I told her to be out by the end of the week or I will have her stuff thrown out. When I walked into the living room, I was shocked into silence. The living room was expanded by a wall, being torn down and having the bedroom that was once there merged into it. She turned my four-bedroom house into a three-bedroom one. I know I didn't sign off on this and from the looks of it, the work was probably done by her boyfriend and not a professional. I yelled at her and told her that I'm going to sue her for everything she has then I left. She went crying to our daughter and my family and now everyone is telling me to give her another month to find a place and not sue her. My daughter is firmly on her mother's side and thinks I'm a jerk for kicking her mother out a couple of weeks before Christmas and suing her. This is why I'm here. I think I'm right and legally I'm right but my daughter's opinion of me matters to me. So am I in a wrong here? I needed to answer some common questions. My daughter is a freshman in college and I rent her an apartment near campus where she lives by herself. She has a room in my house and I assume will have a room wherever her mother lives. My ex fought for the house and had a chance of winning even though we had shared custody because I make much more than her. I offered her the compromise and she took it but her attorney told her it was a good deal and there is an equal chance I could win, which would leave her without a house. My relationship with my daughter is good. She didn't tell me about the renovation because early on I told her I don't want to talk or hear anything about her mother unless it's something that's affecting her negatively. My ex was dead to me and I wanted to spend time with my daughter building new memories. My daughter is a wonderful girl and I couldn't ask for a better one. She has a big heart and cares about her mother. I've made it a point to never talk about her mother since the divorce, so I'm sure she doesn't fully understand our situation. I plan to talk to her. I inherited the house during our marriage, and since we were still in the honeymoon phase, I placed her name on the deed. After that, I remortgaged the house twice, once to get a better rate and once for money we needed. All of this led to my attorney advising I compromise. He said there is a real risk of losing the house so I compromised. And now for some comments. You're not in a wrong. The rules for this arrangement could not be more clear. I don't know where you live and the worth of your house but where I live, there is a huge price difference between a 3 bedroom house and a 4 bedroom one. Your ex's action caused you to lose tens if not a hundred thousand dollars. You're not in a wrong. And sue her. She has had 15 years to find alternative accommodation. You even sent her reminders. And she violated the agreement by having unauthorized work done? Yeah, hell no. Kick her out. You're not in a wrong.
My girlfriend is a chef in a restaurant. She's a wonderful chef, but understandably doesn't really feel up to cooking so usually. She makes herself a dinner before leaving work since they get a free meal at work. When my girlfriend comes over, I used to try to cook for her, but she always said I couldn't cook. She'd gag and say too much salt, too much pepper, not enough SMP, overcooked, undercooked and so on. It was never good enough, which I thought was weird as I've been told I'm a pretty good cook. She said she's a chef so her palate is different. Jokingly, a friend suggested I order takeout and pass it as my own and see if she says the same thing. Well, I decided to follow through. I ordered three orders of a pasta dish from a good restaurant near us while she was at work, plated two portions on my plates and put the third in a pot for the extra. She comes over after work and I serve her dinner. I'm expecting her to like it as this is really a good restaurant. But nope. Same reaction. Gagging. Criticizing all the seasoning. The cook of the meat. So I was eating and it was perfectly fine so after letting her go off, I was like, well, this is a takeout from X restaurant so maybe you should leave a review. And she went ballistic. Long story short, she called me a jerk for setting her up. But now I know it's not my cooking, it's personal, which to be honest was a little hurtful. She's been giving me the silent treatment for a couple of days now. So am I in a wrong? And now for some comments. Nah, you're not in a wrong. Personally, I find this hilarious. Do not cook or provide any kind of food for her any longer. Clearly, you cannot please her. I dated that chef and he was always happy and grateful to have someone else cook for him. So? Also gagging? Extreme jerk behavior right there. That's more than a little hurtful in my opinion. For some reason, she's heavily invested in telling you your cooking is crap no matter what. And I'll be questioning why she's so keen to put you down. Normally, I'd say you're in the wrong for tricking her into eating anything she didn't want to. But as long as it wasn't something she was allergic to slash sensitive to, breaks her dietary or religious eating restrictions, and you didn't do it with the intention to humiliate her or break up with her after. But I think you're right, to be honest. I think this is personal. I think she doesn't want to admit that you can cook. At least semi-competently. Without, I'm guessing, an expensive culinary degree. I think this test was more to prove that she was going to bash anything you served her, rather than to feed her ego. And that, in my opinion, is why this makes you not a jerk. I have a daughter, Elena, 6, and my stepsister, Jess, has a daughter, Hattie, she's 5. Me, my husband, Jess, and her husband, Paul, are all staying at our parents' house over the Xmas period. For context, Paul arrived the day after the rest of us. Very late at night because he does shift work and work late before driving to our parents. The next morning, the girls were playing in Elena's room at about 10 a.m. The adults were all downstairs except Paul because he was sleeping, and my stepdad was out. Suddenly, we heard Paul shouting. This is not too unusual if unpleasant, but this episode sounded particularly bad, so we got up. Before we can even get to the stairs, my daughter runs down crying, saying Paul had shouted at her for waking him up. My husband was livid. I went upstairs to deal with Paul while I calmed my daughter down. I knew it would be absolutely impossible for us to be around Paul after what happened, so we would probably be leaving. Jess said that was ridiculous. Paul probably got annoyed and was tired then. He'd apologize and everything would be fine. I said no, it would not be fine. Nobody shouts at my child and remains on speaking terms with me or around my daughter. Paul should know better than to be acting like that with other people's children. When my stepdad came back, we told him what happened then that we will be leaving because we refused to subject Elena to being around Paul after what he did to her. We don't trust him not to overstep his boundaries like that again. My stepdad agreed, but said that it was unfair we should have to leave after Paul was a problem. He called Paul and Jess down and said they had to go. Weren't welcome on Christmas, 
or until after we had gone home. Paul tried to defend himself, saying the kids should have been quieter, but when my husband got annoyed, Paul half-heartedly apologized. I didn't believe a word of his apology. My stepdad reiterated that Jess was welcome to stay without Paul, but Paul had to be gone within an hour. Jess started crying and said it was unfair and that my stepdad was choosing me over her and was a horrible father. She started an expletive rant so I left the room with Elena and the next I saw was her and Paul going upstairs to pack. They left without a goodbye. Since they have been gone for a few hours, I've got a text from Jess saying how I've ruined her Christmas and her relationship with her dad over 30 seconds of bad judgment. I don't think I created the situation because it was my stepdad's decision to throw them out. I offered to leave. I also think Paul made this bit that Jess is lying in. All he had to do was come downstairs and ask us to quiet the children or pop his head into the room and ask politely. Nevertheless, I do feel bad that Jess is stuck in the middle and that Hattie won't see her grandparents on Christmas because of this. Did I overreact? Would Paul apologizing have been enough? And now for some comments. You're not in the wrong. A 5-year-old and a 6-year-old are going to make noise playing together. It was 10 a.m., not 1 a.m., so I fail to see why anyone should have gotten angry about it. I'm stuck on the part where you say Paul shouting is unpleasant but not unusual. That's an issue. If your brother-in-law is shouting at his kid enough for it to be a normal thing, there is something wrong there. She's five. Her dad shouting at her shouldn't be the norm. Good for you for standing up for your kid and your family. Paul has absolutely no business shouting at your daughter for playing. She's six. Honestly, I'd say that short of causing bodily harm to his daughter, he should never be yelling at someone else's kid. You didn't demand they get kicked. You told your family that as a result of your brother-in-law's inappropriate behavior, you would leave. So your daughter wasn't subjected to it anymore. Your stepdad obviously agrees that Paul was out of line, otherwise he wouldn't have asked you to stay and Paul to leave. I have a feeling this shouting thing happens often, otherwise I don't see why your stepdad would have asked Paul to leave. I'm going to say you're not in the wrong, honestly. I mean children can be loud, but you can't scream at kids that aren't even yours and accept no consequences. And judging from your post, this is not too unusual if unpleasant. I'm assuming Paul screams a lot. So it's more about him and his lack of boundaries than about the kids being loud, in my opinion. I've dealt with people just like this in my own life. Edit from OP. Regarding the kids being unsupervised, I was upstairs with him. And we were all going down to do some baking. The girls asked for 10 more minutes to continue playing before coming down. So I went down to get all the stuff ready in the kitchen. They weren't on their own for hours on end. They were playing with a large dollhouse in Elena's room. Hence, why they were not playing downstairs to start with. I'm 30 year old female. My husband Tom, 35 male, recently had his birthday and he invited some of his friends for dinner, some drinks and then we were meant to go to a pub. Invited were people who I knew and was friends with as well as some people he was friends with that I didn't know or barely knew. One of them was Harry, Tom's new workmate. I've met Harry a few times and he seemed okay. Nice enough. He brought his wife with him, Claire, female, late 20s, I guess. It was my first time meeting her and I will admit, she rubbed me the wrong way. She was just so judgy about everything. But I didn't have much time to talk to her as I completely forgot to buy mixers for drinks and had to run to the shops. I was gone for maybe 10 to 20 minutes but when I came back, the music was turned off and everyone was in the living room. Claire said, perfect, we were waiting for you, we can start now. I was confused but when I got closer, everything was clear. She decided to throw an MLM party during another party. She had a table set up with her products and flyers and all that stuff. I was annoyed but I let her do her thing hoping that 
she will be done and we can carry on with the party. Alas, when she was done, she told everyone that she set up a table in my kitchen and we can go and buy products and sign up to be a rib or whatever it's called. I have had enough at this point. I should mention that MLMs are not yet huge in my country, at least not the most predatory ones but they are growing. Still, many people are completely clueless about them and since I spend way too much time online, I am quite aware of them. I told her to stop it and there won't be any MLM selling in my house. Everyone was confused. She started defending her company saying that it's not an MLM because they are illegal and blah blah blah. Then tried to guilt trip me saying that I don't support small businesses, I quite literally run a legitimate small business myself and I quickly had enough and told her to get out. She started backing really angry, making sure to call me some names including jerkwad. Her husband helped her pack and they left. My husband was really angry that I embarrassed him and Harry and should have just let it go and supported her. I tried to explain to him that I couldn't because she will get other people sucked into her scheme. My husband's friends were divided even after I explained what MLMs are. Today, Claire has been messaging me all day, sending me screenshots of some weird Facebook group comments, supporting her and calling me a jerk. My husband is still annoyed with me. I thought I was right but with everyone ganging up on me, I am not so sure. Am I in the wrong here? And now for some comments. Someone you just met and allowed into your home decided to overrun the get-together specifically when you were not present by turning into an MLM presentation slash recruitment. You're not in the wrong but your husband and his friend and his friend's wife absolutely are. Edit. The main issue is a bizarre lack of respect or self-awareness, but the predatory nature of MLM multiplies jerk level exponentially. Good on you for understanding and putting on plast. Regardless of her prior knowledge of the reality of the MLM business model, the sheer fact that she came prepared and her goal all along was to leave her husband's friend's party having made some cash and maybe a new downline is so out of pocket. You're not in the wrong, she is though. Who goes to a stranger's house for a party and sets up a sales gig? It was wildly inappropriate. I am impressed you waited for her to finish her sales pitch. I would have kicked her out immediately. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.